Hey everyone, welcome to Those Were The Days radio and podcast show. It's Kweesi here, your host with the most, bringing you something from the world of nostalgia. And I'm happy that you're with me on this long, overdue segment of underappreciated movies. You know, as a kid, my brothers and I used to watch a lot of movies where the main characters were children, just like us. Films like this from the mid-1980s that I remember fondly are The NeverEnding Story, The Explorers, Kid Co., Daryl, Space Camp, Flight of the Navigator, and of course, the bigger stuff like E.T. But here is a little gem from 1984 that I was always fascinated with. Maybe it's because it was a kid's film that dealt with the serious side of espionage, and, you know, it felt a little bit more, you know, grown up than any of the other ones that I mentioned before. So today's underappreciated movie is 1984's Cloak and Dagger. The most exciting game Davy ever played Oh, got me Was Cloak and Dagger No one could believe how much he liked it Time to go, Jack Is he always like that? Usually So naturally, they wouldn't believe That the game could become real Don't let them get it Tell the FBI The spies could be real. That the danger could be real. This is starting to get good. What? Just like cloak and dagger. And the only person who can help him is Jack Flack, super spy. A figment of his imagination. Trying to kill us. You can't kill me. You can't see me. Top secret documents are at stake. The time is running out. It's now or never. Come on. The enemy is getting close. There, son. Come on, this is Cloak and Dagger for real. That's what you always wanted. Hey, stop. I don't want to shoot you. But I want to shoot you. The star of E.T., Henry Thomas, and Dabney Coleman as Jack Flack in Cloak and Dagger. It's interesting how they use the theme of North by Northwest in this trailer. I think it sets the mood of the film perfectly. Also, I love how they don't reveal a lot of the twists and turns from the film in this trailer because so many trailers these days do that. Oh, and the voice of the trailer guy. I mean, I forgot how much I missed that. But you know what? Hey, hey, hey. This, this is not a review of the trailer. Sorry about all that. Starring Henry Thomas and Dabney Coleman, the spy thriller caught my attention most likely because it pushed the fact that a video game could become real. It also played on the notion that using your imagination, as grandiose as it could be, could allow you to survive in the real world, even while being just a kid. I enjoy watching Davy, played wonderfully by Henry Thomas, navigate through life using his imaginative skills, which has come on strong probably because of the traumatic loss earlier in his young life. The fun memories of using walkie-talkies with other neighborhood kids and playing spy games wasn't lost on me, as my brothers and I did that many times. Black to Lady Ace. Come in, Lady Ace. I'm here. Kim, where are you? Your house. Get out of there! The spies are there! Kim? Seems we each have something the other wants, don't we, kid? Yeah. We might consider a trade. How's that sound? Just leave her alone. She doesn't know anything. She does now. Do you know the Japanese sunken gardens? Yeah. Good. We'll meet you there at noon. If you tell anybody about this, we'll break your little friend in half. And of course, the fascination with video games. You see, as a film that was released in 1984, video games weren't exactly new, but they were becoming much more than people felt 
or knew that they could be. Instead of being seen as just a way to pass the time while waiting to do something more important, video games had reached a point where it was obvious that they would be used in daily life. There are a few scenes in this film where this is poignant, and I really appreciate them. Think you can break the code? Yeah, the key is how to get to it. I got an idea. The guy who gave it to me said something about some numbers. What number? One million three hundred and twenty-nine thousand seven hundred something. I'll bet you anything that's the secret code that we're looking for. Can you think of anything else? No. Davy, are you alone? It reminds me, Davy, I want to get those walkie-talkies back. Sure, Morris. A quick rundown of the plot. Davy is a highly imaginative kid, fascinated by video games and his imaginary friend slash hero Jack Flack. After suffering a major loss in his life, he turns to his imagination to get him through life as best as he can. While, the neighbor, while with neighborhood buddy Kim, he witnesses a man getting shot, but not before the man hands him a video game cassette called Cloak and Dagger. From here, the adventure picks up as Davy becomes a kid on the run. There are people that are after him from multiple sides, and there doesn't seem to be anyone that he can trust, except his ma imaginary friend, Jack Flack. So, why was he given this video game, and what will it take for Davy to be able to survive the goons who are chasing after him? Well, that's for you to find out, because I'm just here to recommend the film, not spoil it. <laughs> really, guys, the fun of this movie is to experience what it was trying to do and how it gets to its conclusion. Don't give it to him, Davy. Rule number two, never, never play by the enemy's rules. I have to give him something. I couldn't take that. We do it all the time. It's called um, commandeering necessary mission equipment. A few other things I need to mention about Cloak and Dagger is that I really love the location. Not many movies are set in San Antonio, Texas. In fact, the only ones I can think of are the Alamo in Pee-wee's Big Adventure? <laughs> but I like the fact that we, we are in a place not named New York, L.A., or Chicago. It's a serious breath of fresh air. The score composed by Brian May of Mad Max fame was exciting and well-paced throughout the movie. The heroic theme of the film isn't as big and bombastic as something from John Williams, James Horner, or Jerry Goldsmith, but it still gives you that sense of awe, wonder, and adventure. The score made me feel the tension displayed in the movie, and there were times when the music held my emotions in check. In fact, the musical number in the final act of the movie helped grab my attention, and a section of it almost brought me to tears. And speaking of that emotional ending, I think many people will understand why it was so heartfelt, especially if you embrace the movie and put yourself in Davy's shoes. This kid has been through a lot just to get here, doing things that kids shouldn't be doing and trying to survive as best as he could. And look, someone as someone who was probably about five to six years younger than Davy when this was released, I can relate to the emotional buttons that the ending of Cloak and Dagger pushed. So bravo to writer Tim Holland and to director Richard Franklin for bringing this to the screen. Atari video games, spies and espionage, walkie-talkie with neighborhood friends, imaginary heroes, heartfelt moments, powerful music, and a dab of Dabney Coleman. <laughs> if you're a child of 80s films like me and haven't seen this movie, I feel it's imperative that you do. And for anyone who wants to transport back to the early to mid-1980s to reminisce or to learn about that period of life, this is Essential Viewing. Extremely underrated and an exciting watch from start to finish. And if you watch it, please let us know what you think. Leave a comment, like, or subscribe to see or listen to your, our other content. You can find us on various platforms by typing in hashtag Jim and Cleesey or by following what you see on the screen here. Thank you guys for your support, and we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Underappreciated Movies. Take good care of yourselves out there, and see you all next time. In Cloak and Dagger.